Good afternoon, everybody, and good morning to those of you in South Australia and Western Australia. Um, Derek and I are joining you today to take you through a product update for SmarterWorks Automate. Um, this is uh, very much a webinar targeted at existing administrators of the SmarterWorks Automate product um, and really giving you some tips on some new features that have been released as well as also going through some of the features that um, we find some subscribers love and others aren't using at the moment. So we want to make sure you're all across those. If you do have any questions as we go, please drop them into the uh, Q&A um, or the chat as we go. And we'll be able to come to those at the end of the session. So we'll make sure there's time for that. So in this session today, we're going to talk a little bit about how response formatting has changed as a result of the release of the new BIDA um, response collation viewer and what that might mean for you as an automate administrator in how you um, set up your responses. And then we'll talk about uh, follow up response, which is a new feature I think was released yesterday. Um, and Derek will take you through that as well as location based attachments before we go through some of those tips and come to your questions. So as you are hopefully um, all aware, in the beginning of March this year, uh, BIDA released a completely new interface for the BIDA service where responses are collated and presented to you in the BIDA application rather than receiving them as emails. And what we're looking at here is an example of that, um, that experience. Now, because we've moved now from responses being emails to responses being presented in a collated view. There's also uh, changed the way that you should think about response and to move away from this concept of email and to move away from this idea that every response has to start with, hi Gary, thank you for your inquiry, to be more about how you present information within this, um, the real estate of this screen. So just looking at a couple of examples here of where we could make better use of the space, and I'm sorry for picking on organizations. It's not as if um, anyone's really um, you know, free from um, these little challenges. But the first example here is how there's a lot of the screen space has been taken up by this probably unnecessary header that's coming. So again, it's no longer an email. It's now presented within this environment. You need to think about how that space gets best used. Also showing things like your utility ID, sequence number, inquiry date, all that information is presented around the screen already. Like within the response collation viewer, you can see the job ID, the date, and, and so on. So it doesn't really need to be repeated. And what's happening here is that the key message that there are assets present at the job site is being hidden a little bit by all of this extraneous content. And just another example here, the same idea, it's still thinking about responses has been emails. It's got the hello piece, it references the subject line, um, it talks about emails throughout the throughout the content. With the way that people now consume these responses, we have to move away from that mindset of things being emails. We want to talk about how you can set that up as a SmarterWorks Automate administrator. So five quick things to say about formatting your responses. The best thing you can do is make it easy for the people consuming the information to be able to understand the risks that are present and how to proceed safely with working around your assets. I just did some stats yesterday, and on average, every inquiry that gets lodged with the buyer service results in 23 different pieces of content attachments, if you like, for people to review. And that's what makes it hard for those consumers and how you can make it easier by targeting your message. So think about how the response is presented to the user that new response collation viewer is the channel. Show your most important content, highlight that. Describe what the risks are for somebody working around your assets and also the actions that they should take before, during or after any excavation activity. So when you're thinking about reformatting those responses, which you can all do as a SmarterWorks Automate Administrator, 
I think about these ideas of the most important concept, the risks, the actions to take. So for you to go about updating your um, your response template, you can do that in the SmarterWorks Automate uh, response template library. You access that by going into the library, selecting response templates. And if you want to start by creating a new one, then start by copying from something you've already got perhaps. And once you've copied that, then start reformatting the content before saving it to your library. And then you can attach it to your rules later. So just thinking about those ideas we talked about, about how it's presented, most important message and so on. The changes that I've just made to this simple response template is to remove that superfluous dear Joe piece at the start. Uh, it's no longer an email. Um, making sure the most important message is there. So according to records, there is infrastructure present at your job site. Um, I've also here used the fact that SmarterWorks Automate can list out the different types of assets that are present at that dig site as well. And then we talk about next steps. Another thing here is that rather than including a copy of the general responsibilities and duty of care document as an attachment, we can link out to that instead and provide further information about the steps that are needed for that person to, to go ahead and do it. So the aim isn't today to take you through like how to create the perfect response. I know that BIDA has an activity in play to help improve those responses, but really to get you to think about the fact that your content is now being displayed in a new way, and as such, you should think about the, the content that you include in those responses, and that as a SmarterWorks Automate Administrator, this is the, the place to go and do that. Cool. Also important to note that if you are responding with a web map as part of your content, so you might have that show or uh, show on web map link in your responses, then the way that response collation is set up is that by default, that will be shown as your first piece of content when someone clicks on your um, organization. You might not want that. You might want them instead to see that most important message, the risks that are present, the actions to take. And if so, you go into the BIDA service and just turn off that use web map. That's again your choice about what you think is the most important content to display to the user when they come into the uh, when they come to that collated response view. OK, uh, we'll keep moving on. I'm going to hand over to Derek now, who's going to talk about a brand new feature that uh, we released yesterday called follow up response. So, Derek. Thank you, Gary. Hello, everyone. I'm Derek from SmarterWorks, and I'm, and I'm excited to walk you through some awesome new features we have in SmarterWorks Automate. So let's talk about follow up response. Have you ever been in a situation when you realize you need to send some extra information after re reviewing the plans? Instead of manually crafting an email, these features follow up response allows you to send additional information to an inquiry and you can do it all right within SmartWorks Automate. In this quick demo, I will show you how smooth the process is for both the inquirer and asset owner. Let's jump into a scenario. An inquirer lodged an inquiry via BIDA and subsequently received a response from Subcoast Water. Now, imagine if you are the asset owner for this organization, simply navigate to the referral section where you will notice a newly added button called Add Follow-up Response. From here, you can either craft a response from scratch or opt for the predefined template that can be customized as needed. For instance, I would be highlighting in this template to not proceed with the work until you have contacted us. Next, if you need to attach supporting documents, you can choose either uploading the attachments from the library or directly from your device. Once your response is prepared, simply hit the send button and new response will be sent through. A new response will be generated shortly and you can preview what you have just sent out. And from the inquirer point of view, 
the user would have received this new response that, that you have just sent out from Baida. As you notice here, there's a response to showing up. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The second feature that I would like to introduce is called the location-based attachment. Imagine this, you receive a BIDA inquiry that overlaps with a specific location and you need to provide extra information. For example, it's about a recent construction work that has not yet been updated in your GIS as built data, or you need to provide a special permit requirements attachments, or even you would like to include a detailed drawing for area with high density access. So with location-based attachment, you can configure in the map to send an additional document on a defined location. This is an example of an LBA response. The dig site is overlapping on four defined locations. The response will be generated with additional attachments for this job site location on top of what SmartWorks Automate provided. So for instance, you will be able to see four attachments within this response. So moving on, you can contact our support team to help you get started in setting up the location-based attachment. What is needed is the attachment layer to your access map, uploading the files into the document library, and adding features to the attachment layer to describe which documents to return. I'll stop here for now and I'll pass back to Gary. Thanks, Derek. Thanks for taking us through those uh, two pieces. Um, and I want to move on to um, looking at some of the existing features that, as I maybe mentioned at the start, probably don't get used as widely as we expected. And also features that we know are used a lot by some organizations and um, less so by others. And make sure that you're across those and you can think about how they might apply to, to what you're doing. So the, the first one is um, around single sign-on. Now, we're finding that typically IT departments want all applications that they have used within the organization to be managed centrally from an access perspective um, so that they can manage roles, they can deal with people leaving the organization, new joiners, and all of that through managing it um, through the Active Directory or uh, various different identity platforms. So you can absolutely set this up with um, SmarterWorks and it's really straightforward to do. Um, again, if you want some more advice on that, you can contact our support team or check out the help site as well, which will describe how you do it. And basically once single sign-in is set up, um, there's no putting in usernames and passwords anymore. It's just a case of launching the, um, the application directly. Second thing I want to look at is watch areas, and I'll um, hand back to Derek again to take us through that. Thanks again, Gary. Um, okay, as an asset owner, I believe staying in the loop on planned activities around your assets is the key. Think of it as your personal radar. Whether you are a project manager tracking developments, heritage officer tracking activity near sites of historical significance, or even environmental engineer interested in work near waterways. Watch areas will be helpful to notify you whenever a buyer inquiry is lodged in the defined area. Watch areas can be set up quickly, which we will show it in the demo right now. From the search map, look for the menu watch areas under the ellipsis menu. You can then select your desired draw tools and create the area you would like to be notified. You can then enter a meaningful name and hit the save button and your watch area will be created. Switching to the inquirer point of view, this user is lodging an inquiry near the watch area zone that you have defined. Once the inquiry is created, you will be notified with an email with the details of the job site. You can also click on the Open Smarter Works button, 
which will redirect you to the specific referrals for further review. Now, let's move on to the next slides. Let's chat about the Nip comments features. It's like a virtual sticky note for keeping track of everything. These features allows a team member to record internal notes against a referral. For example, when you make a phone call to the inquirer, you can keep a transcript of phone calls relating to planned words here or make notes regarding reinstatement of the job completed or even record flight meetings with the contractors. For each referrals in SmartWorks Automate, there is an add comment button in the side panel. Simply click on it and you will be able to enter your comments. On to the next features, internal inquiries. Sometimes you will just need a quick map with your underground assets. Well, now you can generate in a snap and send it off as a PDF map to anyone without going through the BIDA workflow. The internal inquiries are used by your team members to generate a PDF map of any job site. In this demo, I will show you how to generate an internal inquiry. From the search map, navigate to the ellipsis and click on Generate PDF Map. From there, choose your preferred drawing tools to outline your desired area. Enter the recipient email address and any additional comments. Once completed, click on Submit and you can expect to receive an email shortly. Depending on your map configuration, you may receive one or more PDF containing the generated map. This is how it looks like in the PDF map, which it contains of the outline of the polygon that you have just drawn on map, together with the underground access. That is all from me, and I will now pass back to Gary. Over to you. Thanks, Derek. And another thing that we uh, often get asked about is, can we integrate with um, various different systems, whether it's Dynamics or um, uh, your, your asset management or work order management tools and so on. And whilst we haven't built specific integrations for all of these applications, what you can do is use like Microsoft Power Automate as a way of building these custom workflows that are then triggered as a result of inquiries being lodged in the BIDA service. Um, and you've actually got options to trigger these workflows based on when an inquiry gets lodged, when responses get added, um, and also if you add like subsequent responses as well. So some of the examples we've described here is you know, being able to write a notification to a Teams channel for each time an inquiry comes in. So you may just want to have people again be notified of these inquiries, similar, I guess, in some ways to the watch areas feature that um, Derek just showed us. Uh, you might want to build a workflow that adds records to Dynamics to describe the fact that um, activity has been taking place by particular users of the service or whatever else you can come up with. And what we don't want to do is be the ones that limit your imagination. So we just want to be able to trigger those power automate flows. So I'm going to look really at a really simple um, example here where the power automate is just linked to teams so that every time a new inquiry gets lodged we can then go in and write a message to teams that's going to say the job id um, and link that to the um uh, link that to sentinel uh, so to bider so you can view that inquiry and also provide the address of it you can pull out whatever fields um, are important to you and this is, again, this isn't a training session for working with Power Automate. It's just to really give you the ideas to, to think about how you might want to do it. So with this, I've set up a Power Automate flow that starts with a webhook trigger. We then have two simple um, output 
uh, the outputs that are generated by parsing the webhook to pull out the address of the job site and the job ID. And then we post that as a message into Teams. And so just as we've seen these Teams messages appear here, um, that's based on pulling out the address and the job ID from the webhook and posting it to the channel. Now in Power Automate, when you create a flow that is based on a webhook, you get this URL that it shows you at the top. And that URL, you need to copy that and paste it into the BIDA webhook subscriptions part for your organization. So here I've set it up so referral create is the webhook. So every time a referral comes to your organization, it will trigger this Power Automate flow. So it'd be great to hear examples in future of how you've managed to use this in your organization and um, the sort of workflows that you've built um, you know, sort of thing that we'd really love to get feedback on over time. So that's the uh, in going through sort of ideas about how you might want to consider changing or updating your responses to match the way they get presented in the new BIDA viewer. The brand new, as of yesterday, follow up response feature, uh, location based attachments, and then some of those other pieces that we've been through. Now, what's also important for us is to all, always be capturing your ideas about what you'd like to do next with the SmarterWorks products. And we do have the SmarterWorks Automate Ideas Board available. And on this Ideas Board, you can review ideas that other people have put forward and vote and comment on those. You can also introduce your own ideas and see uh, what other people think about them as well. And to get to that Ideas Board, you again go from the user menu in SmarterWorks Automate. There's the give feedback option. From there, you will see a little dialog that has a link to the ideas portal. And that will take you through to that page where you can go ahead and add your ideas or, or view what other people have put forward as well. So thanks very much for um, being with us today to go through those um, uh, those new features and ideas. Uh, really happy to open up to any questions that people have got now. Uh, feel free to drop those into the meeting chat. Um, I do see there's a couple of questions in here um, so far. There's one from, from Tim asking if watch areas can be uploaded from a shapefile. Uh, no, so we, we see Watch areas has been something very much that all of your users across the organization could potentially use. Um, they create their own little ad hoc informal watch areas for what they're wanting to track. So maybe they've got a construction project, they want to understand if people are working near it, or they've got some um, environmental features to track. So that's very much about all the users being given the opportunity to, um, to sketch out their own watch areas. There is also in Motherworks Automate what we call notifications, which is a slightly different concept, which is more about a controlled set of, um, of notification areas, which can be set up from your GIS data, can be set up from Live Connect, um, so that you have more centralized control of those notifications. So yeah, watch areas is ad hoc, is about sketching and notifications is more about a controlled um, set of areas that you as the um, SmarterWorks administrators can set up for your organization. <clears throat> a question from Brad about um, when AOI files pushed from SmarterWorks to the BIDA website. Uh, Derek, did you want to just uh, give an update on where things are at with that? Uh, we still on the pipeline of our product. Um, I believe that Brad questions it for the AOI that has been, or a new map's been uploaded into SmarterWorks Automate. I believe that you would like to have the AOI to be generated from SmarterWorks and being pushed on to by the website. So I think this is still in the pipeline and we we'll probably in the next uh, six months, we are considering building this into our product. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, and part of the reason for that is that we're currently working on a new um, upload process for AOIs into 
the BIDA service to make it a little bit um, more flexible and work with different GIS formats. We want to have that piece completed first before we move on to the, the integration between Automate and BIDA. Uh, we also had a question from Nick around um, being able to send out different contact information for different areas. Um, Definitely, this is something you can do in the rule studio, um, as well as having asset layers in the rules that say, you know, send out this response if there's high voltage cables here, send this response if it's low voltage cables. You can also have what we call like non asset layers, and these are these don't print on the maps. They don't get shown to the external users of the service, but they do allow you to set up rules so you can say. If an inquiry comes in for region A, then send a response with this contact information. If the inquiry is in region B, send a response with different response information. So um, perhaps we can do what you're asking for, being able to like have tailored contact information depending on the area. Um, if you want to know more about that, I guess get in touch with the support team and they'll be able to uh, guide you through that process. Uh, any other questions anyone would like to ask at this point? We've still got a couple of minutes left. If not, then thank you all for, for joining the session today. Um, um, any questions, please contact our support team or through your BIDA territory manager. Um, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>